Okay, there are still people logging in, but it's five o'clock, so I think I will start. Um, I see, I know at least a couple of the people are in the call, so welcome to you. People are already know, for the people I don't know yet, uh, I'm Casper Spiro, I'm the CEO of Easy Generator, and today I will be your host for this uh, monthly session. So, um, with Easy Generator, what we do is that we facilitate people who do not have an e-learning background to create proper e-learning. In order to do that, uh, you need to follow some didactical rules. Uh, we are trying to build in as much of them as we can into Easy Generator, and we're doing that step by step. So for example, we already have the Learning Objective Maker that will help you to create uh, learning objectives so you can create better courses. Uh, but we have uh, more plans to, to extend that. Uh, but what this webinar is about is sort of uh, teach you a couple of the best practices that there are uh, to create better courses. So uh, we have, uh, and if you want to read all of them, uh, we will send you a link, by the way, uh, after the course, uh, but uh, uh, after the webinar. Uh, but I will also briefly show you. So if you go to easygenerator.com, uh, you see that we have a blog. It's over here. And uh, in the blog, you will find the e-learning best practices, the nine cornerstones of effective course creation. And uh, what we will do today is uh, basically cover the first three of that uh, to, uh, and go into that in, in much more detail. And I will show you some examples on how to do that. And later on, we'll do uh, the other ones. But if you want to read everything back in detail, you can go to the blog because every element has a specific uh, post with much more detail that I will be showing you today. So that is uh, something that we, uh, uh, that we have available for you. So uh, we don't have a huge group. We have 15 people. Uh, so, but I would like to ask you to, to put yourself on mute uh, during uh, the presentation. But if you have any questions, uh, because it's just uh, 15 of us, uh, feel free to unmute, interrupt me, and ask a question. Is that okay? And the unmute button, by the way, uh, you can find on the bottom left of the, the Zoom panel. It's a microphone. If you click on it, it will mute. And if you click again, it will unmute. Okay. Any questions before we start or any remarks? Nope. Okay. Then we'll go. So what I have in front of me is Easy Generator. Um, you uh, should be able to see my screen. Is my screen shared? I'm not certain. Can you see, uh, can somebody confirm? Yes. I yeah, I can see it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we can see yeah. it. Okay, thank you. So normally I, I see a green edge around the shared screen, but this time it wasn't. So therefore I was a bit in doubt. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm in Easy Generator and I'm going uh, to create a new course and I'm going to sort of uh, take you through the first three best practices uh, by showing them. So here, by the way, we have a couple of examples, but today I will start from scratch. Uh, and I, uh, with me, you see a lot of templates. I will just use a teach template, the normal course template and I will name my course webinar example course, and I create a course. So the first best practice is uh, to use, uh, to create a learning objective. So the story there is very simple, and it goes for basically anything you do in life. If, there, if you don't have a goal, you shouldn't do it. And with e-learning, you have to be really specific about the goal. So the more specific your goal is, the better it is. And in Easy Generator, uh, we, uh, we uh, facilitate that by building that in. So if you create an, a new section in Easy Generator, uh, you will see this on your screen. And here you see a learning objective. I'm not sure if you noticed that before, but here you can type in your goal. We uh, try to make it simple. Of course, your course can have a goal. We will add that, by the way, later on. But this goal is for a section. So each section has a specific goal. And it's really important to think about what uh, uh, you want and to create a proper objective. So of course, if you want, you can just start typing in an objective here, uh, but there is a trick uh, to create better learning objectives. And 
we embedded that in the learning objective maker. So I advise you to use that. If you click on that, it will open uh, a separate tool and uh, it will take you to uh, four steps to create a proper learning objective based on Bloom's taxonomy. And I will try to explain a bit more about that. So the first, what you have to do is to decide who your learner is. And in this case, uh, I will type in, uh, I will create a small course on how to create proper learning objectives. So uh, all subject matter experts should know about that. So that is my audience. Typing that in is one thing, but it is really important to, to think about that. What does it mean? So for example, if I type in all subject matter experts, for me, that means these are people who do not have an e-learning background. So if I use any terms that is uh, didactical, where you have to have a didactical education or background in order to know that, I have to explain that because the, uh, the, the, the uh, setting the learner also sets the audience and also sets for you the, the context of what they do know and what they don't know. And therefore also what you should tell and what you shouldn't tell. And one of the rules here is, if you have separate audiences that have really, really different backgrounds, then the risk is if you create one course, you will tell everything, but it's only a part of that is interesting for a certain part of the audience. Don't do that. Be specific in your uh, audience. And if you have very different audiences, it's better to create three separate courses with specific information and maybe reuse a piece of information but make sure that you target it right because you don't want people to read through a lot of stuff that they already know, which is not interesting for them. So in this case, uh, it's good enough for me, all subject matter experts or people without an e-learning background. I was also a proper definition, but it's really important to be specific about that. So that is the first step. And now the magic happens as they say. Uh, so this is, uh, a piece of didactical uh, theory you see now, and it's called Bloom's Taxonomy. Uh, Mr. Bloom uh, was a guy, lived uh, quite a long time ago, but he created six levels of learning. So he found out that if you are looking at any learning process, there are six different levels. And it's not that you always should start with one and end at six, but it is that the remembering, which is the lowest level of learning, is the simplest form of learning, and creating is the most complex form of learning. So um, if you see this, then, um, so you, you, you um, uh, well, let me just go over the level. So remembering is that you basically present a list to somebody and they are able to reproduce that list. So they're nothing new, just like learning the tables uh, for, uh, from your head or uh, the capitals uh, from the, the states uh, or stuff like that. So you don't have to understand anything. You don't have to process it. It's just remembering and reproducing. That's what you want to do there. And by the way, that is a piece of learning, which is if you are working in a corporate environment, it doesn't deliver anything because if people can remember what they have to do, but they don't know how to do it or they don't understand why they do it or stuff like that, there is no point. So sometimes you need this, but it's never the end goal. So one step more complex is understanding. So that means you have to understand a bit more. For example, if I am teaching stuff about the capitals of the uh, countries in Europe, uh, there's a part of that is remembering because you have to know that Paris is the capital of France and you have to know that Amsterdam is the capital of the Netherlands and stuff like that. But if you understand that, it becomes a bit more difficult because you need to understand what is a cap capital. And for example, why is Paris the capital of France? So you, you need to have more information to do that. And you would have, for example, also, and that's really important, I will come on to that later, if you are sort of questioning that, uh, assessing that, you have very different kind of questions. But you also see the moment that I click on a level, the verbs change here. So if I click a verb, so for example, all subject matter experts will be able to, for example, describe, and then I could create describe a learning objective or something like that, then you would be able to sort of repeat the definition. It will not say that you can create a learning objective, which you need to do. So these verbs are all attached to the level of remembering. 
understanding is if I uh, if you go one step further so you really understand not only the definition but also why it is really important to create a learning objective and for example why the elements there are really important so understanding goes one step beyond that uh, but the one that where it be start becoming interesting is the level of applying if you are in corporate learning there's no point in doing anything if you have no is there no application if people are not able to apply what they learned there's no effect on the business and there's no reason for you to do it so sometimes you will have a section which is focused on remembering and understanding just to transfer knowledge but as is that's never enough you always need to be sure that they are able to come to apply that and if you for and that is a, a mistake which is made a lot so for example if you look at a compliance training very often that consists out of all the rules that there are how uh, that you know what needs to be done it's no guarantee that people can actually use those rules and apply them in their practical life so make sure that any course or series of courses end with the level of applying at least otherwise there's no point in doing it so you need to be able and this is also the level i would like to learn uh, use for by the way for uh, my uh, learning objective uh, so in this case, I want you to be able to construct a learning objective uh, after with uh, after this course. Uh, I will also go to, into the three uh, more difficult levels, so the higher levels, I have to say, uh, which is the first one is analyze. So if you're not able to apply it, but if you can analyze it, for example, see the difference between things, that is much more difficult. The level above that is evaluating so you're able to look back and see how things went and learn based on that that's evaluating and the highest level of learning is creating which by the way means that the moment that you start creating a course about a topic that you're an expert on you are learning that is the highest level of your learning you can, can achieve if you are so competent in a certain topic if you're such an expert that you can create something that other people can learn from it that's the best you can do so you're constantly working in Bloom's taxonomy yourself as well. But for today, we will go to the level of application and its construct. So on the top, it will form. All civilian experts will be able to construct. And I have to dive in one step further. Uh, and it's very simple. I want them to be able to construct a learning objective because that's what the course will be about. Uh, and uh, I want them to use the learning objective maker and in short, we call that the LO maker. So if I finish that, I have now a proper learning objective based on Bloom's taxonomy that I can use inside my course. Uh, oh, sorry, I clicked that. So it's now there. Uh, right now, this learning objective is not yet visible for the author. We will change that, by the way, in a couple of months. We'll come up with a whole new publication template and then a uh, learning objective will be included. It's really meant for you as an author to really think about what am I going to create, for who is it, what level of learning do I need to do, and what is it what I want to get across. So... And the simple reason is, if you don't have a learning objective, you don't have any reason to create courses. Don't do it. Is that clear so far? Yeah, yeah. I do. okay. No objections? Everybody agrees with me so far? No, that's clear, thank you. Okay, perfect. So um, I have created a learning objective. So, but now I have to create a course on learning objectives. And the risk now is that I start, I know a lot about learning objectives. I read a couple of books. I read about Bloom's taxonomy. I know, for example, a lot about Cathy Moore, who is about action learning. And she has a, a whole bunch of rules that you have to do apply to make sure that the learning objectives are actionable. And there's a whole theory behind there. And there are other theories that you could involve. You, uh, and so before you know it, if you're an expert on a topic, you will start pouring out content and uh, you are always using this element, the content element. And that is wrong. Because what you will get is very content heavy courses. And you're not certain that you put in the right content for your learner. You only have to put in the content to make sure that people can reach this objective. The best way to do that is come up with your assessment. So start thinking about 
which questions do people need to be able to answer uh, that will prove to me that they are able, in this case, to construct a learning objective. So uh, a couple of things. So I could create, so I'm starting to create questions. I start with the assessment. So for example, I create a single choice question. Oh, uh, I create a single choice question. There it is. Um, and um, so very simple. I start with a, a, a quite a low level. Uh, I will call it, uh, what is a learning objective? Um, that is what they need to be able to answer, for example. Um, let me dive in. I will just create a question uh, right away. So we have a small example. So uh, in Easy Generator, by the way, I'm not sure if you know that, but you can uh, add a sort of in extra instruction uh, uh, by uh, adding content here. So I do that very often like this. So learning objectives are statements that define, and then I can put in some options here that people have to make a choice. So is it expected goal of a lesson of activity? Uh, Is it that define uh, the terms demonstrating skills of knowledge, or is it uh, the possible score of an activity? Oh, by the way, I did it incorrect. It should have been a multiple choice question because the first two are both correct. Uh, so, but well, I will not go back and do that over again. Uh, so, but uh, with a multiple choice question, I would be able to indicate both of them are correct. Uh, so for this purposes, I will not put in uh, feedback and stuff like that. But that is, by the way, one of the other best practices. Always provide relevant feedback. That is an important moment of learning. So, but for uh, uh, time's sake, I will not do it right now. So I just created one question. So people need to prove to me that they know what a learning objective is. So that is the first step. And that also means that I probably want to create a content page and I will put it in right now uh, about uh, a learning objective. Uh, so let me create a content page with the title uh, about learning objectives. I need to open that. Um, and I can, uh, myself, I will briefly create a sort of to-do list. This is how I work very often. So I need to uh, explain probably, uh, so the definition of uh, a learning objective, explain that and introduce things like Bloom's taxonomy so people can work on that. So that, that is the content that I need so, need so people can give a proper answer on what is a learning objective. Oh, by the way, I already went too far, so too much content because for the what is, it's only define what a learning objective is and probably explain that in a bit more detail so they really understand it, uh, but that would be sufficient. So if I put in this content, they can answer that question. So then I think about and uh, what I said, for example, uh, a, a proper learning objective should be actionable. And that means that it's something you will have to be able to do. It has a practical result in your work. Uh, the, 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 the person who is writing about that is Cathy Moore, and she has a theory called uh, action mapping. So probably um, I need to make sure that uh, I explain something about that. So I will probably put in a question on that. Uh, and I have to uh, do something about Bloom's taxonomy as well. So let me do Bloom's taxonomy for first. So I will create... Uh, a ranking question, here it is. Uh, so a ranking question uh, where they, uh, it would be cool if they have to sort of sort the levels of learning in the right order. So that means that they, they not only have to understand them, but they also need to be able to put them in uh, in the right order. So it is remembering, um, understanding, Click here for an extra option. Uh, applying 
analyzing, uh, evaluating. By the way, oh, sorry, I hit my caps lock. By the way, uh, making uh, different uh, kind of question types, different kind of interactions uh, is not a best practice that we will uh, show you later on and creating. Again, I will leave away the feedback um, and I have uh, the questions. So you put them in the right order and they will be mixed for the learner. So, uh, have to. so that means I have to put in a piece of content again and is explain about Bloom's taxonomy. And um, basically what they need to know in order to do that is, and I will make notes for myself again that I will fill in later on, uh, but it is, uh, what is it, uh, sorry, what is it and why is this important? Also, what are the levels and the order? Otherwise, they will not be. Oh, again, hit the keynote, uh, the caps lock. But again, they. Uh, so I will just uh, put it in later on. So that means that uh, I am now able to uh, do that. So uh, then we have uh, Bloom's taxonomy. Um, I also uh, want to uh, do something about uh, action mapping. Oh, let me do that. No, maybe it's better to do first a forgetting curve. Uh, so that's another thing. So it's really important that you understand um, if you create a learning objective, that you understand how that works. Um, so, wait a minute, I'm sort of mixing things up here. No, let me let, let me focus on the on Katy Moore first. So, with Katy Moore, I need to create a question. Um, so, uh, for example, I can put in a couple of statements. And the question is, what is action mapping? And uh, you, or that's probably not a good. So I, I didn't work that out in detail, but uh, you can put in, for example, a couple of uh, terms that they have to match here. Uh, so in this case, for example, um, uh, action mapping and uh, uh, actionable learning objectives. Uh, and so you can uh, define a couple of other terms. I will not work them out all in detail, but you can sort of see that I first try to figure out what do they need to know about the topic. And then I put in the content. In this case, it is, uh, uh, so it's over there, I thought order is not that important. It is uh, action mapping. And then I create for myself again a note, what do I want to put in there? So uh, probably I need to explain about uh, Cathy Moore. Uh, and uh, what I do know is that Cathy Moore has a blog where she explains uh, really well what that is. I have a link to that, that is this blog. So instead of writing the whole thing about action mapping, by the way, this is Cathy Moore. And uh, here she has a, a really cool presentation that explain what action mapping is. And I don't have anything to add. I think that is really, really all there is. So instead of writing everything to get myself, I can also use a curation link, uh, put that in like that. And uh, I can paste the link here. It will automatically uh, get an image, uh, a title and a recap. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the website of Cathy uh, doesn't allow us to get an image, so then it's uh, great so that you can get it out. And But here, uh, the theory of Cathy Moore explained. And you can uh, indicate why it's important uh, to read this for the learner. I'm really struggling with my cap lock. Um, and you have then the action mapping link. So I have that link in, I have sort of well, the explains and uh, what the key thing is, why is it important that a um, uh, learning objective is actionable? 
So I could put in that in uh, as a goal. So this way I am uh, just creating a course and well, I hope you get the drift. So I come up with the questions and then I th think what kind of content is it? And for myself, I really like, you can do it in many ways, uh, but I really like to sort of create the topics uh, maybe put in the questions already and define with short notes what kind of content I want. But now it's sort of like a mess, but I can organize it any way I want. So for example, if I want uh, to start with the content, which is not strange for a learning, uh, course, I can put uh, the content in first by drag and dropping and then have the questions or if you like uh, you do a topic and then have the question on the topic, whatever you want. So uh, when you create things, the order is not important. I create the order always after that. So the first order for me is to create the course and then I start thinking about what is the best order for a learner to follow this. And this way uh, we create a course and um, if I uh, look at uh, the best practices, uh, do we still have them here? Yeah. So I have to go back. So we talked about use learning objectives. So we covered that. We uh, started by uh, created courses in the order. First the learning objective, then the assessment. So the questions and then the content. So I just showed you. So we already covered the first two. So we didn't uh, do the third one, uh, which is uh, use various course templates to beat the forgetting, forgetting curve. So uh, first I probably have to explain to you the forgetting curve uh, and then I can uh, explain, uh, show you how you can use that for example. Um, if you learn anything and in this image it's the blue line. Uh, and by the way, if I search on for getting curve in Google. And I go to images, you will find the original image uh, probably. So there are many, uh, but this one is the original one from Mr. Ebbinghaus. So he was a psychologist uh, from 1800 something. Uh, and he discovered that uh, if you learn something, so everything I'm telling you now, uh, over time, so in a couple of minutes, you will have been forgotten 58% and that will go down to 21% you will for be forgotten in 31 days, unless you repeat it. So for example, I tell you now again, please, please, please begin with learning objective. If you don't have a learning objective, don't create it. So I'm repeating it while I'm explaining it. That's one, in order to make sure that you understand or remember it here. Uh, but that is not sufficient you have to repeat it over time. And that is what this image is about. So this blue line is the forgetting curve. You learn something and it drops. So the only way to get that up again to the 100% is repeat it. So for example, after two days, send them a small assessment. After a week, send them a short video with a recap. After uh, 10 days, give them a small assignment where they have to process the information again or reread the information after, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So try to come up with, uh, it's not learning, it's not a one-time thing. If you really want them to remember something, to learn something, you have to repeat it over time. Uh, it's called spaced learning, that solution. Uh, so make sure that the first time you explain something, within that explanation you already, already have repetition and you can do that by, for example, introducing something, then uh, uh, explaining it and then uh, summarizing it and you already have it three times. So uh, that, that is a way that you can do it inside a course, but you also have to come up with other ways to make sure that people rethink it. And what happens is if you hear something for the first time, it's stored inside your short-term memory. And that is where it dies out. And that is something your, your body has to protect itself. You have so many impressions. If you would remember everything, you would die from information overload. It's impossible to remember everything you see, everything you hear. So you have to filter. So the way that you can remember, so the simplest way is uh, just by repeating it over and over again. Something you know from school. When you learned the tables, it was just like that, repeating it until you know it by heart. 
And what happens after repeating it over and over again is being transferred to your long-term memory. And once it's in there, it's sort of safe. Then you can store it, you can retrieve it, and you can remember it. So it has to land in your long-term memory. So another way, by the way, to do that is, for example, if it's very emotional. So probably all of you know what, where you was when 9-11 happened, or uh, so at least I know. Um, because that was really a big thing. It was uh, really emotional, and that is imprinted in your long-term memory immediately. And that's also the reason, for example, that music is an effective way of, uh, to support learning because it sort of activates emotions and it makes it easier to transfer things into your long-term memory. But if you are just doing a simple e-learning course, repetition is the way to go. And that's the last thing I want to show you today. Um, what I have here is a course. So I will uh, show you how that looks. Uh, if I do a preview, you will see that I now have a course with one section. It's loading. Oh, it's entitled. Uh, here are my notes for the first content page. Uh, the question, uh, I'm just uh, clicking on it. The notes for the second content page. The order where I, uh, that I have to uh, uh, drag and drop the right and so I will oh ah, I made a mistake here oh, still oh, okay it's not that important um, my note for the uh, the action mapping uh, the question uh, where I can answer uh, it and I'm done so I can go to the results and submit them so by the way I failed miserably but that was the course I created. What I want to do now is, in order to beat the forgetting curve, I want to create an assessment out of this that allows me to, uh, uh, that, that I can set out to my learners, for example, after a week, so they have to check it again. And you don't have to create it again, you can reuse the content. And that's the last thing I want to see, uh, let you see. That is what I meant by switching templates. So I have my webinar example course. I create a new one uh, from scratch but this time I use the assessment template. Next, and I will call it the webinar example assessment. Uh, I create it, and I already have questions created, so what I want is just repeat those questions. So instead of using a new section, I use an existing section. And here it presents uh, all the sections that I ever made. Um, oh, I uh, didn't name my section, so that will be very hard to find it. So it's uh, my mistake, I have to go back. So I have to cancel quickly. I have to, untitled section is webinar example section. Okay, I go back to courses, create a new one from scratch, the assessment template, webinar example assessments, and from existing courses, uh, you can search on it. So if I type in webinar, you will find it. All I have to do is uh, drag and drop it from the left to the right. Here it goes, and click done. So you see, it's exactly the same content, but because it's now an assessment template, uh, it knows I'm only interested in questions. So if I now publish it or preview it, it will leave out the content, it will reorder that for me. So it will put them in one long list. So here are my questions, question one, question two, question three, that I can, analyze, can answer. So I can, uh, you see it's a, exactly the same question. Um, I can uh, reorder it. So you see everything works the same, so I submit it in one go. And again, I failed, but it does give also uh, answer on what you did. But this is a very simple way of creating with a different template an assessment out of a course. You can also use multiple uh, sections there and reuse them and build a bigger one. And that is a really uh, 
great way of beating the forgetting curve just by reusing the content that you already have. And the cool thing is, if I now make a change, for example, here in Bloom's taxonomy, uh, in, the, in the question, what is a learning objective? And I put in uh, the word extra here. If I go back to the original course that I have created, the one, the webinar example course, so not the assessment that I was working in a minute ago, you see that that change is applied. So I haven't duplicated it, it's the same object. So you only have to create it once, you only have to maintain it once, you have a course and an assessment in one go. And you have already have a, a course and a first repetition uh, for that course that will be the forgetting curve. Casper, so those will work both directions, whichever one you change it in, it'll change the other, right? Correct, yes. So there's only one section here, but it's being used in two courses. So any change in uh, either the assessment or in the course will be applied to both of them. That's clear? By the way, uh, there is here a sign that it's reused and you can see it's being used in the webinar example assessment and the webinar example course. So if you make any changes, that is sort of reminder, now is that okay to make a change? Do I want to apply that change to all these courses and assessments? The answer is yes, you can change it. If not, then probably you need to duplicate the content, but then you have to maintain it twice. That's how it works. Okay, so that was, uh, were the first three best practices that we want to cover. So again, Use learning objectives and we built in the learning objective maker to help you build that. Uh, so by the way, if you write in any other languages than English, that's not yet available. So the whole tool is translated learning objective maker sort of in beta. We are testing it out, improving it, and then we'll also make sure that uh, it will be available in other, other languages as well. Uh, so uh, sorry for that, but uh, if you want to write in Dutch or French or Spanish, you have to do it, uh, uh, you have to translate it. Um, Please remember, don't start creating content. For first your learning objective, then come up with the questions, your assessment, and only add the content that you need to answer the assessment. It can be more than one page of content per question, or you can have more questions per goal, but make sure that if you have content which is not directly connected to a question, you should leave it out. That's a simple rule. Your course will be shorter, it will be more effective and more attractive. And the third one is beat the forgetting curve by repetition. And in Easy Generator, you can do that, for example, very easily. And if you have a course with content and questions, by reusing the section in a new course, you can create an assessment which you can use to repeat the knowledge. And then you already have one repetition done. But that is what I wanted to tell you today. Any questions uh, from anyone? No, I don't see any questions popping up. Ah, Hi, I hear Casper. something. Yeah. Hi, Shiga. Casper, it's Anne. Yeah, I'm from Canada. Good morning to you, in that case. So what I is your hear, question? Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, uh, so my question is, so if I did want to reuse only portions of a course, I can grab the sections. Um, but then it'll be modified, right? If I touch it, it'll be modified in all the courses across. So Correct. I can duplicate it. How would I do that duplication? Uh, how you duplicate a, a section, you mean? Yeah. So what I just, um, I, I saw where there was copy features. But if I wanted to create a separate course and reuse some sections, but make modifications for that, it's because there's two different roles. So one, I want to modify some of the wording to suit the second role. That's why. Okay, I understand. Okay, so um, that is something which is a bit uh, of a problem. So you have to create a new section, an empty one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I will call that uh, a copy. And then you have to put in, uh, because you can duplicate the questions. Uh, so it's not a complete section you can uh, do, but the content and the question you can duplicate. For example, if I dive into this question, I will be able here to click on the three knots and to uh, duplicate the question. And I go back. 
So now I have it too. And then, but they are not the same. So I put duplication in my, uh, oh no, I had to put it in my copy, sorry. <laughs> I will put the duplication here in my copy. Why will it not open? Yes, put the one. And that way you can just uh, pick and choose from your section what you want to reuse and build a new uh, copy section. But there's, not, there's no way yet uh, to uh, copy a whole section in one go. Okay, is there a way to copy the whole course? Yes, and then you will get copied section because that was the work yeah. I was going to tell you. Yeah, uh, yeah, so that might be easier for my... Yeah, so in this case, for example, if I go to the webinar example course in the course list, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you'll see here three, uh, three dots. If I go over that, delete it, duplicate it, and publish it. So if I duplicate it, I will get a second one. It's a webinar yep. example course. And now it did just copy the section as well and name it uh, copy. Yeah, and now any edits will not affect the other course. Correct, these are separate. Okay, good, yep, that's perfect, thank you. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Any other questions? No? Then, uh, well, we're uh, at uh, the 45 minutes almost, so uh, I did it on time. So just last chance, any questions from anyone? No. Okay, so thank you very much for attending today. Really happy that, uh, thank you. that many of you turned up. So uh, we will, uh, so if you want to read this over, uh, please go to the Easy Generator blog and uh, you can read more details and find more links and also take a, a sneak peek preview at all the other things that we uh, have written out for you. Uh, but we will uh, follow up with all, uh, other webinars where we also explain the other elements in more details and also with examples. So that will be following in later monthly. So thank you for your time and have a great day. Thank you. Thank Kassar. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.